What is going on everybody? This is the first of detailed missions breakdown videos where I will be sharing my experience on how I got S rank in all of them. I would recommend watching the general recommendation video first where I talk about what is measured for ranking, what build I used, etc. I will leave the link in the description. Let's get started. Illegal Entry, one of two missions in this game that you will have to play using predefined mech so you can't rely here on the build. Fortunately ranking in this mission is fairly forgiving, so you shouldn't have any problems. I achieved S rank in this mission only on the second try and frankly it was easier than just finishing some of the later missions. Clean up the first hunger as effectively as you can, ideally you have to take only some cheap damage here. Don't forget to use your blade where appropriate to save a bit on the ammo. In the next section clean up the initial encounter and move to the left objective first. I found this is a more optimal and safe route than doing it in opposite direction. Near the first wreck there will be two shield MTs, dispose of them using your blade. On the way to the middle wreck let the helicopter pass and kill things for you. Skip all the enemies on the way to the last wreck but clean out enemies around. It looks like the fast hack upgrade is not applied in this mission either, so if you try to hack with enemies around you, you are very likely going to take too much damage. As you finish, head straight to the catapult, fight with helicopter await. To defeat the helicopter try to stay right in front of it and hit it with the blade. Lots of his missiles actually can't hit you when you are right in its face and the blade is doing very high damage to it. As I said this mission is very forgiving, roughly you need one repair kit left unused to pass the threshold on repair expenses. I believe it should be around 25k.
destroy artillery installations. This one it is first try, it is a very simple mission. You pretty much ignore all the enemies except targets and move as fast as you can. I don't know where thresholds are, but simply follow my route on the screen and you should be able to complete this mission taking close to no damage. Read 135 clean up. Surprisingly, despite being a very easy mission to finish on your first playthrough, I would classify this as a moderate difficulty in terms of getting S rank. Took me a good 5 tries to get it to S rank. This mission is sensitive to both repair and ammo cost. And from what I understood, you want to keep those cumulatively under 10k, which is not an easy feat to achieve in any mission. Essentially, you have to forget about using repair kits and take no more than a couple of thousands AP damage. I found going through the area clockwise is the most effective route, killing small helicopters between the bridges on the way. You absolutely must have a close combat weapon for this mission, there are few shielded MTs and close combat weapons will make easy work of those without associated cost. I also would use it whenever it is safe, just to have a bit more savings on ammo. Use assault boosts to move fast between groups of enemies. It will not only make you faster, but in general makes things safer. destroy the transport helicopters. We are back to easy stuff. For the first half of the mission, before you go to the elevation, you don't need to kill anything but the helicopters. Be fast and use Assault Boost. This will allow you to get to the second part almost undamaged. Target destroyed. 
in the second half to get S rank you need to defeat a tetrapod MT. It is a little bit to the back so while it is not engaged defeat all regular MTs so you don't get sucker punched. Destroying tetrapod MT should not be a problem if you use my Zimmerman plus Colos combat weapon build. You should be able to shred it in the first stun. For those who are not familiar with my build, strategy is simple. Assault boost towards the target. As you approach it, shoot it with both hand weapons. Follow up with some birds should be enough to stun it. Then swap left hand to close combat weapon and it's over for tetrapod. You still need to be pretty clean and ammo effective to achieve an S rank. I believe the expensive threshold is around 15 to 20k, but with the described strategy it should not be a problem. Nice. destroy the tester AC. Unfortunately I lost the footage of the actual S rank try, but here's just a very clean one during one of my playthroughs that definitely would qualify as S rank. Same stuff as always, assault boost, stun with shotguns and finish with close combat weapons. Should be a relatively easy one. Attack the damn complex. This mission has an alt version where you accept the offer from RLF in the middle. Press half that is the same for both versions, stay mobile and defeat most of the enemies along the way. Don't worry about leaving someone alive, gun 4 and gun 5 will clean up. In the original version I would recommend going through this path on the right and again cleaning up most of the enemies. On the frozen lake near last objective there will be an AC with combat log. You need to defeat it to achieve S rank. It will be surrounded with few small MTs, get rid of them first. This AC is a bit more mobile opponent so if you struggle to get a hit on it during assault boost, try to circle around it using boost to dodge. When using this approach to the fight, do not shoot both shotguns simultaneously, because this will lead to a lot of missed shots and huge windows for the opponent to recover the stun bar. Instead, shoot left and right weapon in the offset, so you create this constant pressure. After defeating this AC, destroy the objective and you are done. This mission is very tolerant to ammo expenses and fairly tolerant to repair costs. I believe if you stay under 20k repair expenses, you should be fine.
an alternative mission where you accept RLF's offer, the thresholds are even higher. I achieved S rank with quite a dirty playthrough where I spent all my repair kits and my repair expenses were over 40k. Still, if you want to have it easier, I would highly recommend doing the same route as in the regular mission and lure Iguazu in this canyon. It is the easiest way to separate your targets and fight them one by one. Iguazu has quite a short recovery time, so be careful when considering if you have enough time to switch to close combat weapon. A few times I miscalculated it and it did cost me. Same goes for Gun 4. However, because I found this mission very tolerant to all of the expenses, there is no need to struggle if you prefer a different build, less cost effective. I am pretty sure you are going to be fine here with, for example, machine guns or whatever. Destroy the weaponized mining ship. Another mission heavily depending on the route you take. If you memorize the route, you should have no problem getting S rank here. First, you go straight to the ship and you can ignore rare trash enemies along the way or kill them. It has no impact on scoring, so it is up to you. If you are piloting ultralight and fast mech, you can avoid lasers simply by boosting to the side. However, if you take one hit by accident or just because your mech is not fast enough, it is not a deal breaker, you still can get S rank. As you anchor this ship, boost straight to the marker. Your route will start from here. Go for the underbelly generator first. You will pass by one of the vertical catapults, but you won't need to go far from it. After taking down the underbelly generator, return to the catapult and go for the right one. Boost towards the generator and stay close to the wall to be out of sight of the cannon. Land safely on the platform next to the generator to recover energy. Right after cannon shot, destroy the generator and start descending. Land on the underbelly platform to get energy back. Cross the ship underbelly to get to the opposite catapult and destroy the second side generator. Again, keep it as close to the wall as possible to avoid getting hit. Then you go for the top one. 
path you see in the video is a bit suboptimal, ideally you want to ascend closer to the generator to minimize time on the top of the platform. Just As you destroy the last generator, the eye will be stunned for some time. A soul boost toward it and destroy it before it can do anything and you are done. The damage I took in this run is pretty much the maximum you can afford. I took just a bit more in my first attempt and it was a rank instead. Escort the weaponized mining ship. While it took me 5 tries to push this mission to S rank, it was a very tough one to get through it for the first time. No less than 20 tries. So it is definitely on a tougher side. I can't recommend enough using dual songbirds for this mission. And the reason is those stupid wheels. Those are fast and could be quite annoying if you don't get rid of them quickly. Songbirds solve this problem. When wheels are entering, they are always heading straight to you, which means they are easy targets. As they get into your songbird's range, shoot. One songbird shot is enough to get rid of the wheel. If you are lucky enough, you can take two of those with single shot if they are close to each other. As for the other machine, if you are using dual Zimmermans, you need to get close and ideally not in front of those machines, otherwise it will just bounce of it. Stunt songbirds done. If you are like me, playing on controller and can't aim properly, so you use lock on, absolutely wait till those machines are staying still, otherwise it is almost impossible to hit. Another important note is how enemies appear. Game will give you time to destroy the first two machines, but after this waves are on timer, so if you don't hurry up, you may end up fighting buttload of enemies simultaneously, which is never a good thing. My advice here is to kill the first set of wheelers as fast as possible. Once a second set of machines appear, destroy one of them and run away from the second. For some reason those are quite stupid and do not always follow you. This will give you a space to defeat the second set of wheels and then come back to the last machine. This mission is quite sensitive to your repair costs, you roughly need to keep it under 15k to make an S rank. Operation Wall Climber. Most of the long missions with boss in the end are usually quite forgiving and this one is no exception. At the beginning I am going through the right, then going down to be in this trench and ascend to defeat cannons. I found this as a safer route, just don't be like me and time when you go up to defeat machines. After that I went to destroy all the cannons on the wall. I have no confirmation that it contributes to the rank, but because they are giving much more money than any other enemy, I have a suspicion they do contribute more to the ranking.
After cleaning the left side of the wall, take down Tetrapod MT and move on to the right side. Instead of entering the wall where the marker is, go one level higher. This will give you a high ground advantage for the next combat area. And then you go into a juggernaut boss fight. Strategy is pretty simple. Fly over it, shoot when stunned, shred with melee weapon. One thing to be aware of, only the upper part of juggernaut's back is vulnerable. If you start attacking from the ground, you will waste your attack as I wasted in this video. Um, retrieve combat logs, uh, very easy mission, uh, not a lot to say, follow the path in the video, retrieve all available combat logs, no need to defeat Z in the end.
Prisoner Rescue. This one is actually a bit tough. The idea is that you always should be ahead of the helicopter, so when it arrives there are no enemies left. On top of that you need to kill Tetrabot MT that stays out of the way, otherwise achieving S rank will be close to impossible, if possible at all. At the start you just go straight ahead and kill everything, no surprise here. But after that you need to follow this pass on the left to get to helicopters, so you can blow those before they even take off. After that you need to go out of the helicopter route, turn to roughly 260 degrees indicator at the bottom of your screen and assault boost to the rock, so you can find Tetrapod MT. Obviously you don't have a lot of time to spare, so take it down as fast as you can. Then get back to the helicopter route to do some cleanup. When small drones will go in to drop two MTs, try to spot the third one without MT. It is a laser drone. Those deal very high damage to helicopters, so take it down immediately, and only after this destroy two MTs that have been dropped. Before the helicopter will land, two more laser drones will appear. You need to get rid of them before they land any shot on the helicopter, and then rush towards the next objective. Don't rush head on but slightly to the left so you remain hidden behind this building from machine guns. Those can tear you into shreds. After destroying the next set of enemies, the helicopter with enemies to the right will start moving towards you, while the helicopter you are protecting will be moving in the opposite direction. You should be able to quickly take down a hostile helicopter and get back on the route.
When Nile arrives, quickly clean up MTs to preserve helicopter HP, and then focus on Nile. The faster you kill Nile, the less cumbersome it will be. Nile is one of those enemies who also uses repair kits, but sometimes you can manage to prevent this happening. The idea behind it is to deal as much damage as possible before stunning it, and after that, don't hesitate and take it down before stun expires. It is not necessary and not always achievable, but if you happen to do it, it is a massive boost to your ranking. Investigate Boss Arsenal number 2, one of the hardest missions for me to achieve S rank and definitely the highest one in chapter 1. There is no magic route or build that will make it easy, at least I couldn't think of one. This mission is extremely sensitive to both repair and ammo cost, so not only do you need to be close to pitch perfect, you also should be very ammo effective. The easiest way to take down Stalker MT is to boost towards it. When you hear bip bip before laser shot, say Mississippi and dodge to the side. This will allow you to avoid 100% of their laser shots. As you approach it, stun it with shotguns and finish it off either with close combat weapon or with kick. The second area technically has two Stalkers, but if you do things right, you will never fight two at a time. As you approach the area, boost towards the corner of the building where the Stalker is and defeat it in the same way as the previous one. Then you go down and scan the area for another Stalker. This one has close combat weapon, but if you shoot first, it won't matter. He falls as any other. Next time, you will encounter three stalkers while trapped in the corridor. Bait close combat one into the tunnel, it will let you defeat it with only one sniper having quite a limited visibility on you, and the other completely out of sight. After that, deal with sniper guys as usual. last encounter is the hardest. Now you are facing four stalkers, three snipers on the walls quite high up and one with close combat weapon and shield. I found that focusing close combat one because of the shield is quite ineffective. You will need to roughly memorize the height of the sniper stalkers, find out where they are based on the radar at the bottom of your screen, assault boost towards the place where you think they should be and when getting in the range of the wall, scan and shoot. After defeating all snipers, you get back to close combat 1. Unfortunately, it is easier said than done. 
especially considering extremely low tolerance to repair and ammo expenses. I believe you need under 5k repair and under 10k ammo expenses or something like that to qualify to S rank. Extract the mandatory inspection. Nothing complex before the final fight, stay mobile, take cover and you will get there. Basically you need to get to the last fight almost full on your AP. In the final fight focus on regular mechs first, try to split them out using Kate. With the tank there is a mech in between threads, this is a vulnerable point you need to focus on. Um, I would not recommend you to use two songbirds as I am using here, I tried regular builds with close combat weapon in a later mission where you face the similar tank and if you manage to get hits in the vulnerable point it has proven to be much, much more effective. Thank <laughs> you. 
attack the watch point. Both regular and elf missions. It looks like those end of story big missions and supposedly tough bosses are actually quite tolerant to your expenses. Yes, killing Balteo's first time could be a tough task, but when I was... Anyways, in every area before Sula, you go for cannons first and clean up after, because cannons can do a lot of damage. Sula fight is no different from the majority of the duels. Circle around, stun with shotguns, follow up with close combat weapons. Use songbirds from above. Alt mission will have snipers in the mix. I would recommend to kill them first. With Balteos, try to stay as close to it as possible. In general, Balteos is way less effective when you just stay at its face. Balteos gets stunned when the shield is down. I do not demonstrate it in this video, but it is a good idea to hold some weapons till his stun status is gone and then unleash all of your firepower. This will give you a chance to stun it twice before he gets shielded up. Also, don't be like me, and when Balteas goes half HP, just run away. Anyways, as you can see, I used two repair kits through the mission, one before Sula and one on Balteas, and it didn't prevent me from getting S rank. I am not sure how much damage can you take before you get demoted to A. Anyways. This concludes S rank of all missions of chapter 1, hope it was helpful for someone, comment, like, subscribe, all that stuff, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.